Well, here's another popular history from Eric Larson, and gee, it's a good one, Demon of Unrest. The period he covers is from uh, Lincoln's election through the fall of Fort Sumter. That's the time period. The location, for the most part, is uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Not exclusively, but mainly. And the way he does it is to trace uh, some key people involved in this whole story. And of course, the most important one is Major Robert Anderson, the guy who uh, commanded the federal installations in Charleston, and specifically Fort, Fort Sumter. And I'll tell you what, he comes across as a completely honorable, totally honorable uh, U.S. officer. And he does it while he's got a, uh, a sympathy for the South. He was born in Kentucky. Uh, he's not uh, particularly down on slavery at all. But what he does is to do the best that he can with a bare minimum, bare minimum of guidance from uh, headquarters in Washington. The other, another person he follows is uh, this maniac, Edmund Ruffin. And I'll tell you what, I mean, he is crazy. I, when you read general history books about the Civil War, the start of it, you realize that he's what they called a fire eater. He was trying to start a civil war. Well, he was trying... He was arguing for secession, but what he was ultimately looking for was civil war, and gee, he got it. And, you know, to me, he comes across as uh, totally, completely despicable. He follows uh, uh, Mary Chestnut. Now, you remem may remember that in the Ken Burns Civil War documentary, uh, Mary Chestnut shows up uh, quite a bit in, in terms of uh, particular entries from her diaries. But Eric Larson does what he does so well. He gives you additional uh, background on this woman. And uh, the additional background is uh, quite interesting. You know, all about her marriage and what society was like in Charleston. And, uh, you know, if you've been to Charleston, you know it's a beautiful city. Uh, she was married to a planner who was uh, who became a, who was an officer in the uh, Confederate Army. So he covers this stuff, and it's I think very very interesting. And the way he writes the book, it's kind of uh, short, punchy uh, chapters. So he's uh, continually bouncing around. Now there are a number of other people that he necessarily follows, you know, President Buchanan, who comes across as uh, absolutely, totally worthless, uh, Winfield Scott, uh, who was certainly played out by the t this time, uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, and he, he comes across as very, very uh, judicious, makes a lot of mistakes, uh, but, you know, you, you can tell he is a really thoughtful guy. And then also William Seward, his uh, Secretary of State, who, quite frankly, was completely uh, treacherous in terms of uh, adhering to Lincoln's policies, whatever those policies would be. He was he was sort of out of on his own. Now, uh, the, there's been a lot of criticism of this book. For example, uh, you know, one criticism is that uh, when he's paying attention to uh, uh, Confederate officers and leaders, leaders in Charleston society, he's, uh, and, and their emphasis on slavery, the desire to continue it, he doesn't pay any attention really to what the feelings were among uh, Southern farmers who maybe owned no slaves. What was it that got them to join the Confederate Army? Well, he doesn't cover that. He doesn't uh, really give a very particularly balanced uh, picture of the uh, uh, sentiment in the, the anti-slavery sentiment in the North. You know, he says it's there, and he gives one or two examples, but you don't get a deep feel for it. But I think all those criticisms, I, you know, they're well taken, 
but I think they may be a little bit out of place. I don't think that's what he was trying to do with this book. He was trying to give a view of this thing. The strongest parts of the book, without a doubt, are the preparations on both the Union and the Confederate side for the uh, bombardment of uh, Fort Sumter. Very, very interesting. Uh, he, he explains uh, some uh, topics, military topics, that you don't often see in other places, but that make, tend to make the whole thing make sense. Anyway, all criticism aside, this thing, in my judgment, is absolutely terrific. Uh, Eric Larson does a great job. I don't know what he's going to try next, uh, but whatever it is, for a fact, I'll be reading it. This week, my recommendation, very strong recommendation, is uh, Demon of Unrest by Eric Larson. I'll see you next week. <laughs>